Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a new episode of EVE Echoes. Tonight on the show, we're going to be completely reviewing the scanning system and how exactly does it work, and what are the tips and tricks, and how to get the best out of scanning, be it that you're scanning death spaces, or be it that you're scanning other people. Be advised, most of them already have adapted and like fitting warp core stabilizers and uh, uh, warp stability rigs. Plus, they've been much more aware in terms of when they're being scanned or if there's someone else in the system that looks suspicious and staying aligned. We're going to get there in a moment in how to avoid being scanned down if you are running PvE in low sec. But keep in mind, you can pretty much scan everything anywhere in null sec, low sec, even high sec. If there's people running encounters in high sec, you can scan them down and go there and pretty much clean up their entire loot. Yeah, this uh, the, the new scanning system pretty much uh, generated a new job. It's the ninja looter. Some people do enjoy living off that, especially if you're tracking uh, uh, hard encounters, the, the ones that are 20 million isk, uh, which have uh, at least two or three elite ships. You can get some decent items out of that. So let's got the chit chat. The first thing we can do is pretty much initiate the scan. Now the scan will do a, a system-wide sweep. Uh, right now we're having the narrow scanner, which is pretty much going to scan for player-owned structures and for uh, ships. We can launch that. If you have a covert ops uh, ship, you can pretty much scan and then cloak immediately so we will not be detected. And you can still run the analysis um, while being cloaked. Now, we have that one signal was identified. However, if that notification does go away, uh, I'm sure plenty of you have no idea where to go and to get back on the scan that was already completed. So you don't have to scan again to get that notification. You just need to go to the map and then you need to click on your system and you need to enter the solar system view. There we have it. So pretty much in the exploration chart, you'll see the uh, dead spaces and the stuff and the belts and the nihilus space that you can find with the wide area scanner. With the narrow scanner, you will pretty much uh, go into the combat section. Uh, <laughs> it's funny, lack of corresponding scanning modules, we do have them. Unfortunately, we are cloaked, so it does not know how to interpret uh, the cloaking ability. And uh, If we do try to give it uh, this command of scanning uh, from the main interface, it will say the interference from the cloaking device is preventing you from scanning. However, if you go inside the scanning uh, itself, um, inside the solar system view it does not know what to do this is a bug i reported it already i hope it will be fixed soon so let's switch over to the combat tab and that we have we have an unknown signature now one of the important things that you want to keep in mind is when you're scanning for stuff some things you may not want to scan all the way why because if you have poor skills when you scan stuff down uh, the victims or the, the targets that you're trying to scan will most likely get a warning that they have been scanned um, skills pretty much give you a bonus in avoiding that so me for example uh, with skills 5 4 uh, which i had on the first day while i was scanning battle cruisers they were given a warning because i had shitty skills of course i'm running a ship with no bonuses and with no rigs on scanning bonuses so i'm pretty much just basing it off off my skills now with 554, five, because this is my current skill levels in basic, advanced and expert in scanning, I can scan down battle cruisers and I think even cruisers and I will not issue them a warning. I will do issue a warning for uh, uh, destroyers and for frigates. So if I'm going to scan down because I have no idea what I'm scanning. So if uh, the 100% shows me that it's a frigate, most likely it got a warning and it's pretty much aware, or at least if it's not AFK, but pretty much it got a warning uh, that it was scanned, the area was revealed by other players, uh, which means they can pretty much align, warp out and do whatever they, they want to do. But battle cruisers, 
uh, and high, and I think cruisers as well, don't get a warning with a ship with no scanning bonuses and with no ship uh, with no rigs bonuses. Uh, just by the skills themselves, 554, five, that's a good number, and this is pretty much what you want to get if you want to scan people down efficiently. Efficiency in scanning people down does not consist in getting the um, wavelengths and, you know, narrowing down and getting to 100%. It's actually not issuing them with the warning, so they stay in place while you get there and nuke them. So I was talking about the thing that you don't need to scan people down completely and let's see why if there's people inside uh, encounter beacons doing encounters or story missions they will be in some random part of space and the beacon itself is going to show up somewhere that is not overlapping any planet or any stargate or any um, uh, anomaly or belt which is pretty much the things that you can already warp to from your overview so right here I have the beacon, you can see it's blinking. I selected it and it's blinking and there's some stuff overlapping. Let's see what it is. So we've got some some stations and we've got a planet and we've got a gate and we have the signature itself. Now, this particular player or ship that I'm scanning is most likely going to be somewhere around these structures because it is overlapping. It's not in some random part of space. So yeah, this means you don't have to scan them down because if it's something small and you don't have good skills, you'll probably give them a warning and you'll let them know. If somebody is inside a belt, you can use the scanner to figure out which belt because, well, if it's if, if this player would be inside a belt, you would pretty much see the belt and the signature unknown showing up right on top of it. Uh, the signals that you get when scanning don't have any deviation so without any deviation what you get which is the signals that you see on the right side of the screen right here are pretty much exactly where they show up on the solar system view which means my target is pretty much anywhere at one of these six or sorry one two three four five uh, celestial objects which could be the stargate planet or one of the three stations so if I just want to be stealthy about it, give them a possible warning that I'm scanning them, I could just go cloaky and warp to each of these and see where he's at and pretty much then go uh, medieval on him depending on where he's at. So this is a good way to tackle down uh, where enemies might be inside anomalies and inside asteroid belts. Now in case of um, if the player is actually in, a, in a, an encounter beacon or in a storyline mission beacon, that's a whole different thing. They will show up somewhere in space randomly and you'll actually have to scan them down and you'll have to find out what kind of ship they're in. So let's try to scan for the sake of argument and show you guys what exactly is it implied when you're trying to scan the unknown signature. So we have analyze signal sources. You click on this and pretty much this interface of excluding the noise signals. Now it says exclude two noise signals, but you can it can be one just one noise signal or up to maximum of two. It cannot be more than two noise signals. If, you're, if you've uh, excluded two noise signals and you haven't reached 100% narrowing down and as, uh, the interface stating that the, sig uh, the analysis is complete, then it means you've picked the incorrect noises to exclude and you've pretty much fucked up your uh, scanning. So you need to exclude them, uh, sorry, add them back again because excluding something that is not part of the noise will actually create more noise and will complicate the wavelength which makes it pretty much impossible to deduce which is the correct one so you'll have to start from scratch but by doing that you can see in the bottom right corner we have the signal load it says 0 slash 88 it means every time we exclude a noise signal that signal load will increase so if you do too many operations you're pretty much going to clog up the analysis um, of your scanning and it will pretty much go into a lockdown preventing you from doing further analysis on the signature you've identified for I think the cooldown is around three minutes but there's a workaround for it you can 
exit the um, analysis uh, interface and pretty much rescan the system again and it will reset the timers that's one of the options but you will consume fuel because uh, scanning modules consume fuel it's not your internal capacity you need to have fuel on board in order to run the uh, scanner so let's take a look at the interface of scanning effectively so there's two types of, of waveforms that you can analyze. This is one of them in which the signal is pretty much distorted. As you can see, it goes up and then is abruptly down and then abruptly upwards. And it's pretty much desync and it's pretty hard to follow. And you can't exactly tell which of the noise single cor uh, signals correspond to it. And there's the other waveform pattern, which is pretty much a zigzag, uh, which gives it this one does not give it too much warping in terms of visually uh, the wavelength being warped the noise signals being warped but the um, zigzag pattern it, it, it distorts the signal pretty much and it's pretty difficult that I think that one is the hardest uh, to do but there's a secret to analyzing the signals so for example we have um, the noise signals on the right side of the screen there's an important thing that you need to consider here see there's this dotted lines uh, going around vertically on this specific wave chart so if we pick any of these patterns we only have five you don't have every time there'll be five available noise signals for you to exclude two of them or one of them so let's pick the first one and let's take them bit by bit and you understand why one will match and one will not match and also when it, when there's two signals uh, two noise signals being overlapped and you have to exclude both of them taking co uh, into consideration that those two signals will interact with each other and will pretty much distort a bit the wavelength that you see but nonetheless the apexes uh, the, the downs and the highs will still be visible and that's what you want to base your scanning analysis on so let's pick the first noise signal as you can see um, what I was saying about the vertical dotted lines is these actually what you what you see in the noise wave on the bottom of the screen pretty much matches what you see in the signal waves received and I'm talking about the exact sequence of the waveform now on top it's sure it's distorted and it's pretty much in all sorts of ups and downs but you see it clearly on the bottom so first of all we're looking for the highs and the lows and as you can see most of them match with the exact spots in the highs and lows here we've got a high right here and it matches the one that we're seeing here and it's exactly if you try to overlap it it's going to fit exactly inside also we got some of the lows here there's some areas that don't match properly and that's most likely because there's a second noise signal that's interfering with it but it's pretty safe to go with the first as being excluded but let's go over to the second one and uh, let's see why this does not match so let's take number four for example number four looks like this if we take a look at the highs and the lows on the top side of the analysis uh compare it to the noise wave that we're trying to exclude here you see that this waveform does not match in any way not even on the highs not even on the lows not even on the frequency of how these ups and downs occur so this is definitely not one of the ones that i'm trying to exclude so let's exclude it and we'll reach another pattern pretty much the um, the, the received waveform will be excluded and we get this new pattern which is the leftover pattern that we haven't excluded yet and this one is pretty much obvious which one is it it's this one I know I'm talking out of experience but you can take them one by one and as you can see this one does not match because look at this side here what it's a mountain which has some left and right this one has just ups and downs ups and downs this one is definitely not it because the ups and downs definitely don't match um, this one definitely does not match any way possible the only one is this and if we take a look at the actual forms of the wavelengths these do match what we're trying 
to accomplish it. And if we do the exclude here, we've pretty much narrowed down completely. And there you have it. Analysis successful and you get the actual ship that you've been scanning. Now it's 100% and it will stay there. Now when you're scanning, actually forgot to do this, it was a pretty important thing to mention. You see this thing, the refresh button right here, it serves a purpose. So when you're trying to figure out the wavelength and the waveforms and which is which and which to exclude, your victim or the target that you're trying to scan um, might be running away, not in terms of getting a notification because at this point he's not getting a notification, but maybe he just finished up his mission. So he might have just left and you've been trying for the last five minutes to scan him down and what to do? Maybe he's not there anymore. Uh, would you reinitiate the scan? No, of course, there's this specific button for that. And you click that and it will tell you if the target is still there or it's gone. So if it's gone, it will say, well, you can finish up your analysis, but it's not guaranteed you're you'll get to any results and it's actually a hundred percent if it says it's there it's still there you can resume scanning if it says it's gone you can just abandon and rescan again maybe some other people join the system so that's what the button is for it also has a time of i think six seconds you cannot spam it constantly you just need to um click on it once once you're halfway done to check if the target is still there and then continue on scanning Moving over to the analysis successful part. So what happens once I manage to get 100% on this Venture 3? Well, as I mentioned initially, um, if the player is inside a cosmic anomaly or it's inside a, a mining belt, you don't need to scan them because you can pretty much view them in the solar system view and warp through those immediately and well i don't know tackle them blow them up whatever floats your boat and what you have is a command menu which is approach warp and of course if you're in a fleet you can do a fleet command fleet warp but let's talk about the warp for a minute because it's pretty important so if the player is that you're scanning is sitting inside an anomaly or in a mining belt which are pretty much stuff that you can see on your overview and warp to them already you have this option of warp to this translates into warping relatively to the ship that you've just scanned only if the ship is inside a cosmic anomaly or it's inside a mining belt if the player is inside a encounter beacon or encounter instance or inside a storyline mission beacon then when you hit that warp button you will not warp relative to the ship itself that you've just scanned. No, you will warp relative to the beacon. And that's very important because if you are part and you're trying to scan people down and get them to pew 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 pew, if you see the player and you say, oh, I'm going to warp directly to him. And when you do that, well, guess what? You'll be getting into zero on the beacon of the mission. And if the NPCs are there, well, if you don't have much tank or don't have a prop mod to get farther away or even if you have a cloak you're gonna get decloaked because you're getting to get right on top of the beacon in zero and if there's NPCs there they're gonna mess you up so you don't want that so when people are doing missions the best way to do it if you want to really catch them and I don't know if you're hunting bots like me you want to get like the best angle of approach. So first of all, you go into warp to 100 and you make sure that you're doing this while being cloaked. I'm cloaked, so I'm just going to warp to 100 and what it will happen, I will be getting 100 kilometers from the beacon of the mission and not from the player. Uh, you might even land among some of the debris, some of the wrecks that he's been doing. So be careful out there. But once you get 100 kilometers of the beacon, right now I've landed 100 kilometers from the player itself because this player is not inside a storyline mission or inside an encounter beacon. So once you get into the site itself, you have to analyze which is the best warping position. Because every time you warp to, to his ship, you're actually warping to the beacon. So 100 kilometers from his ship will be 100 kilometers from the beacon 
actually. So we want to assess the situation, see where he's at, see what is um, on the direction of his, let's say, the beacon, his ship, and what's uh, the planet or celestial that he's aligned to, or he may be just uh, a kite ship sitting at 100 kilometers. He came from somewhere. He came probably from a station, from a planet, from somewhere. Now, most people that have already adapted are no longer sitting like that they're just going into one direction not being aligned with anything so that anyone that is trying to scan them down and get inside cloaked and trying to catch them will have to fly a lot of distance to track them down and to tackle them meaning they have plenty of uh, space a uh, room and space to just align and warp out and get the hell out of there so this is very important. Remember, if you warp to a scanned, completely scanned ship and it's sitting inside a belt or an anomaly, you will warp in relative to the ship. And if the player that you're trying to scan on is sitting inside a story mission or inside a standard encounter, when you warp to his ship, you're actually warping relative to the beacon itself. So use that 100 kilometers to your advantage. Try to get the best warp in point. Go back, if you're running something cloaky like uh, like my RB2 CovOps, um, you have that 15 second timer and you need to be careful around that because if you just land near them and or just like, I don't know, approach them and decloak near them, you'll have 15 seconds in which you cannot target them. Uh, meaning in those 50 seconds they can just leave. Uh, some cruisers just align in under six seconds and they're just out. You cannot catch them. So the best idea is warp out after determining what is the best approach, the best warp in position, and you can um, decloak after you reach that celestial, wait for 15 seconds and then warp back. Uh, to warp back, you need to open the map again, go to the solar system, view, and then click on the combat and you'll still see the signature here unless you've performed another scan or the player has left you will still see the signature and with the analysis complete it's showing up and you can still warp to it it's going to sit there until you perform another scan or you leave the system so that's pretty much it on how scanning works and uh, how pirates can use this to their advantage and these were pretty much the tips and tricks for other people to scan other people. Now, for the people that don't want to be scanned, of course, you can fit the anti-scanning rigs. Uh, of course, you can fit the warp core stabilizers and the warp stability rigs. Uh, people have already started doing that, and they work versus solo pirates, but versus fleets of bombers and God knows what, like interceptor fleets, uh, that won't save you. Not even warp core stability. So. I don't know, it's all a gamble. If you go to the low sec, expect like heavy duty encounters or like you need to warp out, get in, get back, get out again. It's more dynamically interactive, let's say, uh, in a pleasant and unpleasant way at the same time. So let's, uh, let's bring equilibrium to the balance and uh, let's give some tips and tricks to the players that are running PvE content in Losek as well and how to defend against these. So as I mentioned you either go for rigs, you either go for warp core stabilizers or there's some pretty awesome things that you can do in order to avoid being um, tackled and destroyed. Uh, one thing that you need to understand is uh, there's ships that don't have decloaking delays in targeting and those are the bombers if there's going to be a fleet of bombers that has scanned you and it's going to come to you and point you you're pretty much fucked there's nothing you can do however for other types of situations you need to be aware as you need to check the local if the local spikes or is somebody that you don't understand what he's doing here he's been sitting around for too long you might not get the notification that you're being scanned so please be wary and try to align to something like a stargate or a station don't align to a planet because if you warp to a planet and there's an interceptor that sees you warping to that planet he'll be able to warp faster than you and he'll land on the planet faster than you and when you land he'll be able to catch you yeah don't do that also safe spots no longer safe because Per people can scan you down. So the best way to get safe into low sec is either a, a station or a gate because they both have guns. 
So that was tip number one. Tip number two is to pretty much get in a position that if somebody does scan you down and tries to get to you, he'll go, he's going to have a hard time getting to you. That means going into places that have no alignments and no warping points or positions for other players to benefit. Like I was saying, I'm looking at the overview and uh, actually I'm looking at the space inside the beacon and I'm seeing that this ship is aligned to planet 4 or whatever and I'm going to warp to planet 4 and then come back exactly on top of him because I've seen where he's at and what's the best entrance to the site to get on top of him. So if you want to be on top of the other people that's tr that are trying to scan you and tackle you, go into sections of the beacon that don't have an easy access point. Uh, there's no planet in between, there's no stargate, there's no whatever else, no anomaly, no nothing. But yeah, there's areas that you can do that and I encourage you all to do that to stay safe. I've had some tremendous experiences in these past days. I've had kill nails switching hands so fast in five minutes that i don't even understand what happened i was tackling a prophecy i was trying to get on top of a prophecy that was probably a bot account and was running a storyline encounter and while i was trying to get a a decent um a landing on him a tornado scanned him down and came and started shooting him and uh, then I, I i i thought to myself maybe this tornado is much more juicy target because bots usually don't have too many storylines and faction and dead space modules. So I went for the tornado and basically the tornado destroyed the prophecy. And I, saw, I, I was able to tackle the tornado and because he was artillery fit with strike cannons, he had no chance of landing one single blow on me. was able to just orbit him and apply full damage. But guess what happened? I started receiving notifications that a lot of players other players have scanned this area that have been trying to get the tornado to die so in less than 30 seconds a fleet of interceptors came inside the beacon and i was just taking taking the the tornado into hold but the interceptor one of them was burning for my ship and it was pretty much i need to get out of there and i went the hell out of there and it turns out the tornado did die to the interceptor fleet but then something more interesting happened it was a cinnabol and a an Ashimu that scanned us before the interceptor fleet came and when the interceptors finished off the tornado and were, were looting around and doing whatever the Cinnabol and the Ashimu landed inside the site and pretty much wiped the interceptor fleet it's insane the low sec just got its mojo back and it's all awesome and you can do all sorts of stuff of course uh, a lot of people will complain you're no longer able to run big reward uh, encounters with um, let's say risk-free and I, I think that's good because just getting a tremendous amount of risk from uh, low sec encounters which pretty much gave us like 4 million 5 million and 20 million ones this is well, this was all just a cash infusion inside the game and up until now every player that been running storyline that's why the uh, prices for storyline items is so down the drain and it's poop and also why there's a lot of risk in game because of uh, all the players running a lot of pve content risk free especially in high second low with this change with the introduction of the exploration system and we'll have to see how the market stabilizes and uh, everything goes but it's a long way and it's a uh, it's a journey but i'm going to be observing and uh, i'm going to have much more fun with the scanning every day every single time that i get my hands on some free time i'm just going to go in there scanning and see what kills i can get <laughs> yar pirate life for me don't forget about our community question of the week, which is, do you think there's any chance for solo content in Nihila space? Please leave a comment below and let me know, and you'll automatically get inside the giveaway pot. Uh, remember, we've got two Mega Combos ready to give out on uh, Wednesday, Thursday or Friday, depends on when I manage to film the episode uh, and give you guys the prizes. But yeah, it's an awesome opportunity to get some Omega Combo action. 
They just need to answer the bloody question. Uh, plus, in our next episode, I'm pretty much going to go ahead and actually give you a guide on how the Nihilus uh, scanning and death spaces and how, in how it's inside the Nihilus. I don't know if you've had the time to go inside and explore. Many tried, uh, some of them found disappointment inside. We'll get all over the juicy details in the next episode and see how that goes. That's it for today. I hope you guys learned something. Thank you guys for watching. Give a very big shout out to my channel supporters and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.